Welcome to day 70 of the Atlantic Ocean season, day 88 in the Eastern Pacific, it's August the 9th and uh, we currently have a few systems active at the moment. First of all, Hurricane Henriette which has um, attained Category 2 status, 105 miles per hour at the moment. And we also have a new depression that has formed in the Western Pacific, uh, Tropical Depression 11W, as well as three other invests that are currently active at the moment, four as a matter of fact, um, out in the uh, Pacific at the moment. So let's take a look at the whole uh, overview then, 97W starting up at left to right over the Philippines, 95W just near the Mindanao Island, 11W which is currently located uh, to the north of Palau, Henriette which is currently headed towards Hawaii will pass to the south, 93E which has formed in the uh, central east Pacific I suppose you could say, and a 92E which is likely to form in the, in the far eastern Pacific. In the Atlantic things looking fairly quiet at the moment, there is a small system down near Venezuela um, that has a near zero percent chance of development at the moment. That was initially 10 or 20 percent um, just a day or two ago or in the past 24 hours but that has gone back down to below 10 percent and is not likely to form. In the Indian Ocean things remaining fairly quiet as per usual for this time of year. Uh, no systems likely to form here in the next two days. Let's take a look at the sea surface temperatures then. In the eastern Pacific, you can see lots of warm water, especially near Mexico, um, extending um, at around 5 or 10 degrees north towards uh, Hawaii. But um, where the current storms are at the moment, waters are at least uh, good enough for storm development. And Henriette is uh, curving off to the north, probably going to be uh, moving over marginal waters and then dipping back towards the south where waters are more favourable again. In the western Pacific, you can see where 11W has formed is in fairly, va in fairly warm waters at the moment, um, and that's likely to continue as it heads towards the west-northwest, um, certainly ripe for intensification, which is exactly what it's expected to do. So let's take a look then at the current storm then in the uh, eastern Pacific, Hurricane Henriette, which currently has winds of 105 miles per hour, pressures 976 millibars, positions 17.1 degrees north, 139.4 degrees west, and is expected now to turn towards the um, west-southwest. Uh, initially it was moving towards the west-northwest. It's just starting to turn back towards a southerly direction now and is likely to weaken from here on in. Um, I don't think Henriette will pull any more surprises. It was a bit of a surprise to see it at Category 2 status um, as it was weakening a little bit um, earlier on in the day or indeed at the end of yesterday but has re-intensified to a Category 2 storm. This is probably going to be its peak, 105 miles per hour but uh, Nonetheless, it will remain harmlessly out to sea for passing far to the south of the Hawaiian Islands. This is the current shear map then. You can see where the storm is located. The big hurricane icon just south of some um, very strong shear towards this north. Though it is slackening off just a little bit, um, which will probably keep it a little bit more favourable for the storm. There's a bit more shear towards the south as well. But you can see in that little alley that the storm is likely to pass through towards the west-southwest, shear is low and decreasing in that area. So um, the storm will last a little bit longer than it otherwise would have. So let's take a look now at the Western Pacific. This is the current storm 11W, which is um, currently located to the north of Palau and Yap, to, uh, in between the Philippines and Guam, pretty much, and is expected to move towards the west northwest and intensify into a tropical storm very soon. And then eventually, there's a typhoon, a major typhoon at that, um, is certainly on the cards. Could make landfall in the Philippines as a Category 3 storm with winds of maybe 125, maybe even 130 miles per hour, and then move through Luzon Island, possibly the northern tip of Luzon and then into the South China Sea as a quite ferocious storm, possibly Category 4 strength. We'll certainly keep our eyes on that one. Uh, currently though it's 30 miles per hour, 1004 millibars in terms of its current intensity. Uh, so this is how it's been looking in the Western Pacific over the past 24 hours or so, a little bit more than that. You can see the uh, two invests over the Philippines. Um, Invest 97 is certainly the more prominent one towards the uh, west uh, western part of the Philippine Islands and we, of course we have the new storm 11W which is towards the centre of your image there which has developed and um, become more organised in the past 24 hours as well. This is Hurricane Henriette, you can see an eye formed in the past 24 hours, this is the uh, float imagery of the past few hours indeed. Um, you can see the eye uh, becoming a bit wider towards the centre of that animation, towards the middle part, and then just coming a little bit smaller again, possibly on the on, um, on route to collapsing eventually as the storm uh, grows weaker. 
and looking at Invest 92E which is towards the eastern part of the uh, Pacific currently with a 40% chance of development so that's fairly immoderate at the moment and uh, could become a tropical storm certainly the models are predicting at least a tropical storm generally uh, this is hit at the moment not too organized or too developed just yet but um, that's likely to change over the next uh, two days or so and this is tropical depression 11W which has formed in the western Pacific you just saw it earlier um, certainly a candidate for um, possibly becoming a significant storm and um, you can see how it's developed over the past few days flare ups of um, current storm activity here and there in the past 24 hours but certainly en route for development trying to get some spiral banding out there as well in the past few frames of that flare of imagery the CMC model one then takes um, Henriette out to sea, obviously a new storm forming after that and possibly another one at the very end of that loop in the eastern Pacific. That second storm will be um, probably be a hurricane maybe, or at least a strong tropical storm in the Atlantic, a new system coming off the African coastline moving through the Cape Verde Islands at the end of that one. The ECMWF um, doesn't really, isn't really too clear on any storm development anywhere in the next, um, in the next 10 days or so just has one or two systems that could uh, become tropical storms, minimal tropical storms maybe in the eastern Pacific and a wave moving along in the Atlantic but not really anything significant. The GFS model has two systems um, the current invest in the eastern Pacific develops both of them at least to a degree uh, 92E more so um, into a tropical storm and then has a storm in the Atlantic as well just south of the Cape Verde Islands becoming a tropical storm at the end of that loop that's around seven or eight days out. Uh, the NavGem model has a storm moving out um, in the eastern Pacific that's 90 w, 90E rather 92E uh, moving out to sea and uh, possibly away from the Atlantic as well. The GFDL model uh, you can see both current invests on that map there um, not really developing into at least into a tropical storm uh, but that's what they're showing currently rather broad systems as well by the looks of things and the HWRF model has something rather similar uh, but I believe has them both developing there possibly uh, into hurricanes maybe we'll, have to, we'll, we'll wait to see about that one but it was fairly accurate the HWRF model in predicting um, the current storm Henriette's intensity which is certainly interesting to see uh, so this is the intensity models for Henriette uh, the red line and the purple line next to it is where we are at the moment and you can see pretty much reaching its peak uh, one or two models have it sustaining that for 12 hours and then gradually weakening this is the track forecast you can see the Hawaiian Islands there uh, all models steer it clear of those islands passing quite far to the south uh, probably not causing much in the effects of disruption or anything on the Hawaiian Islands themselves now uh, this is the shear um, you can see it rising slightly but certainly not too much to um, destroy the storm so to speak um, only 10 to 20 knots which isn't too detrimental uh, it is somewhat but not not um, not extremely and this is sea surface temperatures as well dipping a little bit now below 26 degrees which is the general threshold for storm development it is likely to rise again but that will probably take a bit of, of a toll on the storm at the moment and the relative humidity is likely to drop as well meaning a more hostile environment for the storm over the next few days So let's take a look at the Western Pacific forecast then, uh, you can see the CMC model first of all taking that Storm 11W into the Philippines and then becoming a rather intense typhoon in the South China Sea before its second landfall in uh, China, not too far from uh, Hainan Island, just uh, west of Macau as well um, as a typhoon by the looks of things. The GFS model as well um, predicts a fairly severe storm moving into the Philippines and then through the um, South China Sea to a second landfall near Hong Kong, probably just uh, just east of Hong Kong. That's what it's currently saying. A little bit of a stall out in the South China Sea and a change of direction, but certainly what appears to be a typhoon making landfall there, both, uh, both landfalls. Um, so this is the overall prediction season scores then for August the 9th. Uh, this is the top three. William in first place with 71 points. Hogan Barber in second with 68 and BFDIA submission two in third place with 64 points. That's the current top three. Um, you can submit your own storm totals at the website force13.com forward slash interactive just click the 2013 predictor season button and you submit your totals if you wish but uh, do hurry because uh, the scores are going down with time as the uh, skill decreases and um, obviously uh, the accuracy is more easy to get because half the storms are already formed so what happened on this day then on August the 9th in 1963 Arlene passed over Bermuda before being as a category 2 hurricane um, in 1985, tropical storm Claudette formed it near Georgia and moved out to sea. Uh, that's pictured um, a few days after formation. Tropical storm 2 formed in the Gulf of Mexico in 1987. That one remained unnamed. And in 1995, tropical storm Gabrielle formed in the Gulf of Mexico as well, the western part, the Gulf of Mexico. 
In 1987, Typhoon Tina turned Pearl's Tropical in the Western Pacific. In 2000, Tropical Storm Ewinia formed also in the Western Pacific. In 2002, Tropical Depression Bertha made landfall in Texas. In 2003, Tropical Storm Hilda formed in the Eastern Pacific. And in 2004, Tropical Storm Charlie formed near the Windward Islands. That's um, Tropical Depression Bertha there making landfall in Texas. Not too much of it there making landfall. Um, in 2005, Tropical Storm Fernanda formed in the Eastern Pacific. There it is pictured just a few days after its development, after its formation. In 2009, Tropical Storm Goni dissipated in the Western Pacific. And in 2011, uh, Marifa turned post-tropical in the Western Pacific as well. That's one of those systems towards the north of that image. Um, I'm not sure if it's the one moving into China or the one that's just offshore of Japan there. Uh, but that's the current what it currently looked like in 2011 on this day on August the 9th. And uh, don't forget, you can track any storms that form at the website force13.com forward slash stormtracking.html. That's the main page for the storm tracking um, information where you're presented with the uh, map which shows where the storms are. Um, in relation to the world and at the top and bottom tables which show uh, where the storms um, what intensities the storms are at as well as any current warnings that are in effect there are no warnings out there at the moment for any storm but that's likely to change very soon especially in the philippines because it appears likely that tropical depression 11w will cause a few problems over there, or at least uh, raise, raise some warning signals in the next few days we'll certainly keep our eyes on that one um, in terms of any storms in the eastern pacific it doesn't appear like they're going to affect land any soon uh, anytime soon or indeed in the Atlantic uh, and there will be no warnings in effect most likely uh, and you can also check the uh, social pages as well YouTube Facebook and Twitter Force 13 is on all three of those mediums just search us you should find us fairly easily enough um, and please do as always show your support by doing the usual means of engagement liking subscribing commenting favoriting or indeed anything else uh, that you may think of that I usually forget at this time of the animation I say the same thing every time but um, I, I still do mean it um, and um, if you have anything positive to say, that would be very much appreciated. Um, I don't expect it. Um, and it's 108 days until Hurricane Week 2013. Um, just 108 days until our big feature that we run every month, every year. The second time we're doing it this year. Uh, just go on the website, force13.com forward slash Hurricane Week 2013, HW2013.html, and um, you could get involved if you wish. I very do much appreciate anyone who does. We're certainly seeking collaboration because we're going by nation. Um, and it, we'd love to hear your storm stories if you have any. The next bulletin will be coming up at around midnight UTC on August the 10th, that's Saturday morning. But uh, for the time being, that's all for now.